Good morning, everybody. Ted Haggard here from the Storehouse Church in Colorado Springs, and that is the House Church uh, Ministry of St. James Church. And so it's good to see you this morning. Everything is going well in beautiful Colorado Springs. The weather is great. The grass is turning green. The sky is blue. The wind is blowing. And it is a delightful, delightful time in the springs. Lots of visitors in the springs right now. And so it's great to meet some new people and enjoy them. Well, this morning we are in Proverbs, the eighth chapter. And Proverbs 8 is so interesting because it talks about wisdom. And it talks about how wisdom is calling to all of us for a hearing to be able to improve our lives and strengthen our lives. Now, what's interesting about wisdom is that wisdom was created by God before the universe was made. And wisdom, we kind of personify wisdom, but wisdom is a set of ideas. It's a way of thinking. It's a way of taking um, knowledge and judgment and the facts that are around us and use those to be able to successfully accomplish a task or successfully reach a destination that we decide we desire to reach in our lives. So if we don't use wisdom, we end up with a train wreck. If we operate in wisdom, we end up achieving our goals. Like if we have a goal to have wholesome children or healthy children or happy children, or if we have a goal to have a successful business, or if we have a goal to write music that people like, or if we have a goal to uh, just have self-expression, that's easy. That doesn't require wisdom. But if we want self-expression that influences others, that would require some wisdom. If we want self-expression that influences a large number of people, that requires additional wisdom. And so, so wisdom by itself then when we add godly, a goal of godliness to that, then wisdom becomes ultimately good. And so wisdom is the ability to accumulate knowledge, experience, uh, uh, facts. Uh, what I mean by facts is natural laws and put those together so that you can achieve something like flying an airplane or driving a car or constructing a car or uh, building a building that will not blow down or building a building that can withstand an earthquake. So each of those increasingly uh, difficult tasks requires increased wisdom. So these are the uh, wisdom is the discovery of foundational principles and putting them together with other issues, other realities of life so that you can accomplish a task. Uh, last week, I think I illustrated for you that um, our president used the threat of um, uh, economic sanctions on Russia to try to keep Russia from invading Ukraine. That was a misunderstanding of the leaders of Russia, because Joe Biden's world, uh, economic success is important and popularity is important and things like that, but not in Putin's world. So when Joe Biden threatened to um, to uh, place sanctions there so there wouldn't be a McDonald's there anymore or wouldn't be a Starbucks there anymore. Putin didn't care, but Joe Biden thought that was a serious threat. So wisdom would have required Joe Biden to understand what's valuable to Putin and, and to threaten him with things that are valuable to him so that he would not, so that he would have had an incentive not to invade Ukraine. But it was more important for him to try to um, uh, get Ukraine and get it under the under his control than what Joe Biden was threatening. So wisdom requires understanding the other person. Wisdom requires understanding your audience. Wisdom, or like, for instance, those of you that are parents, that you want your son to stop something or to start something, uh, you need to understand your son. And you need to understand what's valuable to him. And you need to be able to work with him. That that's wisdom. So 
Um, like right now, we're saying that uh, we're giving people the choice of whether they want to be a male or a female or how they want to identify and and how they want to be. But we know the reality is that there are, there are chromosomal differences. There are biological differences in the difference between testosterone and estrogen. There are other physical biological differences that would require surgery if somebody wants to change genders. And so you have to evaluate the wisdom of doing something like that and how that will affect a person psychologically. And so very often they say, oh, these people have a very high percentage of uh, transgender people have a high percentage of suicide. OK, so they're assuming it's because people respond to them negatively, but it might because be because of an internal conflict that develops in a person when they do that to themselves. And so to try to determine what happens to a person inside when things happen and what happens to a person socially when things like that happen, that would require wisdom. So let me tell you just a little bit about the history of wisdom. It starts in Proverbs, the eighth chapter, verse 22. And here it says, the Lord formed me. This is wisdom speaking. The Lord formed me from the beginning before he created anything else. I was appointed in ages past at the very first before the earth began. I was born before the oceans were created, before the springs bubbled forth their waters, before the mountains were formed, before the hills, I was born. Before he had made the earth and fields and the first handfuls of soil, I was there when he established the heavens, when he drew the horizon on the oceans. I was there when he set the clouds above, when he established springs deep in the earth. I was there when he set the limits of the seas so they would not spread beyond their boundaries. And when he marked off the earth's foundations, I was the architect at his side. Okay, now here we have it, everybody. The Lord used wisdom in forming the clouds, in forming the aquifers under the soil, in forming the mountains, in forming the rotation of the stars in the universe. The Lord used wisdom in setting the sun where it is in relationship to the earth. The Lord used wisdom to establish the beautiful, beautiful tapestry that is around us. The masterpiece that we live in was created in consultation with wisdom. Here it says, I was his constant delight, rejoicing always in his presence. And how happy I was with the world he created. How I rejoiced with the human family. In other words, wisdom put us together and our environment together with God, or rather God did that with wisdom. And so God used wisdom to form nature around us and the setting around us. And so why is it that people can look at a beautiful, beautiful mountain scene and draw peace and serenity? and draw life. We know very often you can take a wayward child and all you need to do is give them 40 acres or more to run and play and learn and enjoy, learn and learn winter and fall and spring and summer, learn the rotation of the seasons, learn the soil and how it works to grow things and develop things. And you take a child and he starts learning those things and he becomes a better man or woman. And so there's something about nature. Nobody ever says when they look at uh, Times Square and they say, oh, this just brings peace to my soul. And so and it's so interesting to me that that um, very often environmentalists will live surrounded by um, <clears throat> tar and glass and steel and they want to protect the environment where people that live in the environment just live in peace. And they live in harmony with the environment. They don't even have to think about protecting the environment because they naturally do. Here the Bible says, in verse 31, I'll repeat it. And how happy I was 
with the world he created. Have you noticed how happy people are when they go camping or when they go out into the mountains and take a hike? Why is it that people so voluntarily hike in nature and enjoy those walks? Why is um, the big park right in the middle of New York City so important for New Yorkers? It's because there's just something about the way God created things that if we can work in harmony with it, we find joy and peace and happiness. If we work contrary to it, we very often end up being fools. And so, my children, listen to me, says wisdom, for all who follow my ways are joyful. I know people that never feel rested. And it's because they've never figured out how sleep cycles work and how their body chemistry works. They've never figured out the difference between caffeine and just resting peacefully. They've never understood the difference between a movie and a book. They've never understood the psychological difference between conflicting with people and trying to uh, control them or working in harmony with people and mutual respect. See, if they've never figured out those things, then going to work is a conflict, marriage is a conflict, children are a conflict, doing virtually anything becomes a conflict because they don't understand how wisdom created people and how wisdom created emotions and how wisdom created uh, chemistry or worked with God in the creation of chemistry. See, all these things, I meet people all the time that have never figured out relationships between men and women. They think men and women need to be equal or that men and men and women need to struggle to dominate over one another or men and women need to abuse one another and use one another or the way wisdom designed it, that men and women complement one another beautifully. And if they'll just work together in a beautiful atmosphere of atmosphere of mutual respect, then all of a sudden we're discovering the way God relates to human beings and the way husbands and wives relate to one another and men and women can relate to one another in a constructive way that is productive and beautiful. Here it says, so my children, listen to me for all who follow my ways are joyful. That's verse 32. Then 33, listen to my instruction and be wise. Don't ignore it. Joyful are those who listen to me, watching for me daily at my gates, waiting for me outside my home. For whoever finds me, whoever finds wisdom, finds life, and receives favor from the Lord. So wisdom works in God, and God works in harmony with wisdom. Wisdom is created by God. Actually, some people will say wisdom is godliness. I don't think that's true. I think I know I know godly people that love the Lord Jesus in the scriptures, but they haven't listened to wisdom yet, and they're fools. So they're unhappy, they're controlling, they're manipulative, they're uh, self-centered. But as you grow in scriptures, you have the option of growing in wisdom so that you can become a mature, happy person. Whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But those who miss me injure themselves. All who hate me love death. Well, that's a good lesson for today for all of us to seek wisdom, to find the way to put the pieces together. So we operate in harmony and in peace the way God asks us to. Well, listen, it's great talking with you today. You have a wonderful, wonderful week. God bless you.